Good evening, and welcome to a Halloween version of a book review known as Knowing Fear by Jason Colavito. The book is basically about the origins and structure of the horror genre, and if I was to do this properly, you'd think I should be at least in costume. Go ahead and assume that I am John Carpenter's The Thing. That should set the mood. The main premise of the book is the idea of how aspects of knowledge, of learning, of coming to discover things is a major underpinning of the entire horror genre from its origins as a response to the Enlightenment and its various values and as that flowed into the various generations to the Romantics, the Victorians, and of course to 20th century things. Two major aspects that he's looked at is the idea of discovery of being in some haunted sort of situation and then uncovering some truth that is then terrifying. Of course, this might be in the aspect of something supernatural, but maybe even something more natural, but nonetheless very terrifying. And the other aspect that's probably most well christened in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the idea of pursuing forbidden knowledge, knowledge that you ought not to have and that wreaks great terror, which is illustrated rather well in that early 19th century novel. This isn't to say, of course, that the premise is always that knowledge is bad. For example, in Dracula, as Colavito points out, there are basically three aspects. You have the forbidden and inappropriate science and knowledge of Dracula that allowed him to become the monster that he is, but of course has to then shun all that is good, right, and holy in the world. You have uh, Surrey, who is dogmatic in his scientific beliefs, very meticulous, but he does not have the inquiry process that should lead him to the truth that's only done properly by Dr. Abraham Van Helsing, who is open to all forms of knowledge, and through his proper pursuit, discovers the cause of various sicknesses to be the recently brought to London vampire, and eventually successfully extinguishes this and the terror that it brought. So we see that there is a dynamism to knowledge, and we can also see it play back and forth other things. Ghost stories usually have a believer and skeptic, and the skeptic finally through discovering the things that the believer already basically had intuited, who had the subjective reasons for coming to believe objectively, yes, there is this spook of sorts. And we see how the genre will change through time with new discoveries, especially in the sciences. Frankenstein, very influenced by some of the biological research of the early 19th century, especially how electricity could cause dead matter to move again. We had, of course, Darwinian evolution, the ideas of Freud and psychoanalysis, and, of course, in the early 20th century, discoveries of, say, in quantum mechanics, in physics and astronomy, showing how big and frightful the cosmos is. In many ways, this is then well captured by one of the greats of the 20th century in horror with H.P. Lovecraft, with the idea of basically putting humans on the cosmic stage and being overwhelmed by how insignificant they are and the forces of the universe coming in and amorally swiping them away, especially in the noted Call of Cthulhu and the mythos that built up around that. And of course, we also can use the horror genre to explore the fears of the societies example I can think of best that does this is from Japan with the franchise of Godzilla. Well, it's big and terrible. There we have basically a couple aspects of the knowledge thesis going on. We have the discovery aspect of slowly discovering what the natives had always believed about a giant monster, and in particular this atomic monster that had come and started attacking the Japanese coastline. But also the aspect of how it is created by atomic weapons, and so is the result of the forbidden knowledge that allowed us, of course, to make atomic weapons in which the Japanese felt very directly. <laughs> But again, also, it is knowledge that finally defeats the monster, especially as the military utterly failed, 
in many ways kind of representative of the Second World War for Japan as their military unsuccessfully defended against the atomic menace that had destroyed much of the uh, great country that it was and then with the great fire bombings of Tokyo and the atomic weapons of uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima we then see how science in the Godzilla franchise in the first movie at least defeats the monster and saves them also the thing that is enjoyable about the book is not only does it explain the origins and history of the genre but it also then tries to make some of the ways it's progressed more sensible including the slasher films and the things I might call torture porn of more recent such as Saw so if you wish to understand horror this becomes a very useful volume in case you're just interested in yourself or if you wish to produce your own you definitely want to understand where it comes from and you can then be able to see where else it plays out whether it be in old novels whether it be in the movies of Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy of early Universal fame or even more recent things the Coppola version of Dracula or in video games whether it be the Resident Evil series or when I prefer Silent Hill. So celebrate Halloween, sit back, watch a good scary movie and understand what is going on in the subtleties of the script supposing it's a good movie and begin to no fear.